I first learned about this from the Da Vinci Code years ago. Early Jews believed that the Holy of Holies in Solomon's temple housed not only God, but also his powerful female equal, Shekinah. His equal? There is no equal to God. Men seeking spiritual wholeness came to the temple to visit priestesses or hierodules with whom they made love and experienced the divine through physical union. That's that talk where people are talking about being intimate with God. Oh, we need intimacy with God. That's eyes full of adultery, people. From the Da Vinci Code, you remember the idea was that Leonardo da Vinci encoded certain themes into his paintings, and while all the claims of the Da Vinci Code, some of them are just way out there, this one I believe, that, that Leonardo da Vinci, when he painted his Last Supper, is supposed to be Jesus and the Twelve Disciples, right? And you can tell which one's Judas because he's the thief holding the bag. And we have Jesus dressed in a, a red shirt with a blue cloak on. And it's supposed to be John, the Apostle John, sitting next to him with a blue shirt and a red cloak. I'm going to take a look at it. They're opposites. See how they're leaning away from each other? See how the V shape between them? Um, and this red-headed female sitting next to Jesus is Shekinah. It's supposed to be uh, like Mary Magdalene who they say was the red-headed harlot girlfriend of Jesus that he got pregnant. Not only did Da Vinci give Jesus a girlfriend in the form of Mary Magdalene his buddy Michelangelo hired to paint the Sistine Chapel in the ceiling where you see God supposedly giving life to Adam by touching his finger. That's not how it happened in the Bible. Michelangelo, we know something's not right there because that's not how God gave life to Adam. So when you look at this painting, you see that God's left arm is around a bare-breasted, red-headed woman who is Shekinah, God's equal. There is nobody equal to my God. No woman equal to my God. Here is um, Sophie Nevu, who is the female hero of the Da Vinci Code from the movie. She is supposed to be Mary Magdalene. She's supposed to be of the lineage. She's supposed to be of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. She is a direct descendant of Christ. And there is the guardians of the grail in this movie, the, the grail keepers, who are guarding her and protecting her so that the bloodline of Jesus would remain on this earth because out of the bloodline of Jesus is supposed to be a future king. another Jesus who is coming out of the Shekinah. So here is an artist's depiction of Shekinah. Notice she's holding a chalice. So who is that according to the Bible? That's Revelation 17. She has in her hand a golden cup and it's full of the wine of the fornications of men. And she's made all the world drunk with that wine. That dove above her, that's not, see, that's not really the Holy Spirit. That dove indicates to you that it's pretending to be the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's Shekinah, the red flowing. And by the, by the way, the fingers, the hands always make the gesture. I'm compiling a list, images from motion pictures where they keep, they keep, using this sign. They keep doing it. Okay, I'll present that. I'm collecting them now. Every time I see it, I, it's like I zero in on it. I can spot. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, That is as above, 
so below, all joined into the same body. Okay, and we know who that represents. In fact, if you type in artist depictions of Mary Magdalene, you're going to overwhelmingly find different artists at different times painting the scarlet woman, usually with a chalice, the one in the middle, she's actually knelt at the feet of Jesus. Notice the skull at her feet, all with long flowing red hair, usually dressed in scarlet of some kind, holding a cup. Here's more, Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Here's his Mary Magdalene. Notice the long flowing red hair, the one in the middle. She's clothed with uh, serpents entwined about her. Notice this image on the left. This is a stained glass window in a church in Scotland. Jesus holding Mary Magdalene's hand. Notice she has red hair and notice her belly. You can tell by the belt that she's got, the girdle she's got, she's pregnant. And thus we have the image from Roman Polanski's, Roman Polanski was a pervert. Roman Polanski's movie, Rose Mary's Baby. Red hair, red dress. She was impregnated by the devil himself, and she's carrying the devil's child. And if you, if you study films, imagery is everything. Rose Mary's Baby takes place at Christmas time. What does that tell you about the birth of a Savior into the world? Uh, I find it everywhere. Here's uh, Scully from the X-Files. In the X-Files, Mulder represents the Christ figure because he's on his search for the Holy Grail, which was alien, get this, alien and human DNA mingled together. That was the Holy Grail that they were in search of. Notice her red hair. Uh, Lilu from the fifth element, she has a unique property in her DNA. She has alien DNA, and she speaks the divine language, the secret magic alien language. Dr. Banks from the movie Arrival, she learns the circle language of the aliens that helps her foresee the future. She's like the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah. Murphy Cooper from the movie Interstellar. She decodes the binary instructions her father is giving her from the fifth dimension that will save mankind. And then we have the new Lois Lane, the consort of a god from the planet Krypton. Do you know, what, do you know where they got the planet Krypton from? Krypton means secret, a mystery. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were the two Jewish men that invented the Ubermensch, the Superman. And he's from a planet called Krypton, and his father's name is El, Jor El. He is Kal El of the house of El, which is God's name. He's the son of a God who falls down to the earth to be the Savior. And he's the bridge between the two worlds, the heavenly world and the human world. And his girlfriend, Lois Lane, now she has red hair. She used to have black hair in the comic books. Now she has, now she has red hair. She is the Shekinah. Uh, there's a website called crystallinks.com. There's a lot of information. It's sort of like... Um, the Secret Teachings of All Ages online is sort of what it is. There's a lot of different articles about all things occult. Here's what Crystal Link says about Shekinah. While the Bible does not mention the name Shekinah, she is nevertheless bound to extremely old traditions and closely relates to the ancient goddesses. Particularly significant is the Canaanite goddess Asherah, who at the beginning of the Israelite settlement in the land of Canaan was often referred to as Yahweh's consort, a beautiful being of light whose most important function was to intercede with God on behalf of her children. Such an entity had to come into being to soften the harshness of the original Judaism. Here's more images, a red-headed 
glowing angelic type being who's watching over her children. She has a heart full of love and a crown. Notice there on the right, the dove, the Shekinah, the sacred self. Unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. I'm telling you, everywhere you look in the occult realm, the witches, the pagans, the new agers, they all get the Shekinah right. They know who she is. They know that she is not God, the masculine God. In fact, a lot of new agers, and they hate the masculine God, but they love the Shekinah, the female spirit who is the goddess, the harlot, who sells herself for money. From Wikipedia, the Kabbalah associates the Shekinah with the female. According to Gershom Sholem, quote, the introduction of this idea was one of the most important and lasting innovations of Kabbalism. No other element of Kabbalism won such a degree of popular approval. The feminine Jewish divine presence, the Shekinah, distinguishes Kabbalistic literature from earlier Jewish literature. In the imagery of the Kabbalah, the Shekinah is the most overtly female Sephirah, the last of the ten Sephirot, referred to imaginatively as the daughter of God. The harmonious relationship between the female Shekinah and the six Sephirot which precede her causes the world itself to be sustained by the flow of divine energy. She is like the moon reflecting the divine light into the world. Now, do you know the idea of you have the greater light which rules over the day and the lesser light which rules over the night? The lesser light is Lucifer. Because Lucifer doesn't contain any light in and of himself. He emanates or is an emanation of the true light, a reflection of the true light, just as the moon is the reflector of the sunlight. That's why it's the lesser and not the greater. But the lesser wants to be the greater. The lesser, the lower, wants to be like the most high. That is Lucifer and that is Shekinah. So Shekinah dwells because God is too high and mighty to dwell among his people. So God sent a mediatrix, a female representative to stand in his place. Now I want you to remember something that according to the Jews now you have the tabernacle you have the most holy place there was the Ark of the Covenant that was the throne of God and the cloud of glory the glory of the Lord in the cloud rested on the Ark of the Covenant which was the throne of God so think about it if as the Jews say, that's not really God. That is Shekinah resting on the throne of God, the female consort, God's equal. Co-mediatrix. See, Christ is the only mediator, according to the Bible, right? Well, according to them, she is the only mediator. So she sits on the throne of God. So now, take a look at this. St. Stanislaus Catholic Church, Polish Catholic Church, Chicago, Illinois. You have, she's clothed in scarlet, covered in red. She is the Shekinah with the light of God flowing out of her, sitting between, look at this verse, Psalm 80, verse 1, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. See, I'm just, now I'm furious. This image, this is, this is like worse than Manasseh, when he put an image 
in the most holy place in the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was and God got him for that. Now we have the Holy Roman, the Mother Catholic Church with actually putting the image of Mary clothed in scarlet with the light of God, the sun light shining forth from her sitting between the cherubim. Now you can be all fuzzy and warm about the Catholic whore church all you want to. You can be part of the domination that now says, well, the Catholics are brethren. Now, we don't like some of their doctrine, but they're our brethren. You can be part of that if you want to. I'm not going to be anywhere near it. Not that. No way. No how. This is from the St. Stanislaus Catholic Church website. The former ark contained the essence of the old law. Our Lady contained the essence of the new law. Our Lady became a divine container or bearer of God at the Annunciation. This highly unusual monstrance from St. Stanislaus Kostika Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois depicts the Blessed Virgin on the ark. From their website, you can look this up. Seeing Our Lady as the new ark in the Annunciation is no novelty. St. Gregory Thaumaturgus, in his third homily on the Annunciation to the Holy Virgin Mary, has God the Father speak thus to St. Gabriel, speak in the ears of my rational ark, so as to prepare for me the accesses of hearing, but neither disturb nor vex the soul of the Virgin. Upon the ark on the propitiary between the two cherubim was there the Shekinah. See, they know, they call it that, or glory cloud come down. Derived from the Hebrew word for to dwell, this was God's visible manifestation showing that he dwelt with his chosen people. On the two occasions when the ark was enshrined in the tabernacle in the temple of Solomon, respectively, the Shekinah filled them in so spectacular a way that neither Moses nor the priest could enter in. Now the Shekinah is identified with the action of the third person in the Catholic and Protestant circles. The descent of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, for instance, is seen as an antitype of the glory cloud overshadowing his temple. And she, see they know, the Catholic Church knows who Shekinah is. It's the Virgin Mary, the co-mediator between God and men. Now think about it. They just said that she sits in the propitiary place, the place of propitiation. Whereas the Bible says Christ is our propitiation. In other words, we come as sinners before the mercy seat of God. Christ's sacrifice on the cross makes the atonement possible so that when we need to be forgiven and absolved of our sins, we come to Christ and Christ absolves us from all of our sins. But now Mary sits in the propitiary place on the Ark of the Covenant so that if we come to God for propitiation, we must come through Shekinah or Mary first. So in the Septuagint, which was the Greek uh, translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, they added all of these other, you figure the Jews going to add to the Bible. Well, they did in the Septuagint. So there's a book called The Wisdom of Solomon in the Septuagint. Not part of the Bible. Not Ecclesiastes. Not Proverbs. A separate book called The Wisdom of Solomon. Here's what it says. For she, Shekinah, Sophia, or wisdom, is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. In verse 26, she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. She's compared with the light. She is found to be superior. Shekinah, wisdom, protected the first formed father of the world when he alone had been created. She delivered him from his transgression. 
Shekinah became a shelter to them by day and a starry flame through the night. She brought them over the Red Sea. To that I say, 2 Peter chapter 2, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall, privily, secretly, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many, many, over one billion Roman Catholics in the world, many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Verse 17, these are wells without water. Notice this, clouds that are carried with a tempest, like storm clouds, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. See the scriptures? God already foresaw this. He said they're going to speak evil of the way of truth. They're even going to deny the Lord that bought them. And they did. Because now they've put Shekinah, the female, the harlot, the woman, Rosemary, Mary, as the mediatrix and the one by whom propitiation is done through. They put Mary in the place of Christ forgiving our sin. They denied the Lord that bought them. And these are clouds, all right. They're clouds. But they're clouds of a tempest. Storm clouds like Gog. And clouds in whom there is no water. No, no Bible, no word, no spirit. Shekinah. Jesus, Peter knew it. Jesus knew it. The Bible knows it. God is telling us what Shekinah is really all about. So, if the, the cloud is where the glory of the Lord is, Jesus, a different cloud, which represents another spirit, is going to bring in a different Jesus, right? I noticed that on a particular tarot card, it's like the movies that I show you where all these aliens in their ships are coming down through the clouds. Somebody uh, reminded me, I missed one, Independence Day. In the Independence Day, this scene where the aliens are coming down on uh, the White House, Washington, D.C., they come through the clouds. Good catch. And there's, like I said, there's probably others. But I noticed on this tarot card, that there was this image of like a hand coming out of a cloud. So let me show you this. This is from a website on tarot. Clouds hold the symbol meaning of revelation. Consider out of the mists, remember the mist of darkness, out of the mist of our deepest thoughts, suddenly an epiphany comes. A bright idea comes out from nowhere. This is the basic cloud symbol meaning. Depending on the card, the tarot card, clouds can also symbolize confusion or clouded judgment. Primarily, clouds represent higher thought and messages from the divine. And these are all tarot cards where they have clouds in the background or clouds as part of the symbolism of that particular tarot card. Notice down on the bottom right, you have a hand coming out of a cloud holding the pentacle or the pentagram. We know what that pentagram means, right? Speaking of the mist of darkness, which is the cloud that the Shekinah is in, Acts 13, and when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, false prophet is his title, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, which literally means son of Jesus. Remember the Jesus bloodline from the Da Vinci Code. 
which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. That's what this is all about. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, this is where he transitions into Paul, is Acts 13. Filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him, and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. Remember what we just saw, the clouds represent confusion. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. See, what's going on now? What's happened for years in the Catholic Church? What has happened now in the Protestant churches, non-Catholic churches? Is that instead of the cloud of the glory of the Lord in the midst of the people, the Spirit of God. Now you have a different kind of cloud. It's a mist of darkness called Shekinah. And she has clouded the judgment of people all over the world, all over this country, especially in Kenya, Dr. Owar, and many others like him. To all my friends in Samburu and Turkana, I love you. And God sent me there to tell you the truth that these false teachers and false prophets who claim that they're getting these divine revelations from God and you've sort of maybe by choice or maybe by force had to follow these guys, I'm here to tell you, follow them no more. Open your Bible and read it and let God fill you with knowledge and wisdom from his word. Not clouded judgment from the mist of darkness that rules over these false prophets and over these false churches which are everywhere. And you can tell who they are. They're the ones that have their hand out getting your money all the time. And your daughters. And maybe in some cases your sons. Now, I'm going to read a passage of scripture with a cloud in it, and I was wrong about something. I'll show you what I was wrong about in a minute. First Kings 18, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Seven is the number for perfection. If you go seven times, you'll see it. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So you get this picture here. This is three and a half years now. Think about that. Three and a half years and there's been no rain. And now Elijah prayed. Elijah, the Bible says, a man of like passions as you and I prayed one time. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. He prayed again. And it rained. And he sent his servant back. Seven, Go look and see if you see anything. Nope. See anything now? Nope. Do it seven times. He did it seven times. On the seventh time, he sees something. He comes back and he says, I see a cloud. Let me read it. I see a cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Now, I looked at that for years, and I said, well, that's the, the hand is a picture of Christ, and he's coming in the clouds. And I wow, that's pretty cool, right? Because then, you know, you'd have the rain coming down. So let me kind of show you where I was going with that. 
Exodus chapter 4, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. He put his hand again into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. I like this story. I like this story because it's a picture of Jesus. Because Jesus, in John chapter 1, verse 18, no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So the first time Moses has his hand in his bosom, this is Jesus in the bosom of the Father. He comes the first time, but his hand is leprous as snow. Well, leprosy is a type of sin. It's uncleanness, right? Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Hebrews 9.28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I love this. So first time, here comes Christ. His hand is leprous, white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Isn't that neat? So Christ comes the first time, and on him, he comes out of the bosom of the Father, and, out of, and on him is laid all the sins of the world. So he takes those sins, makes propitiation for us, dies on the cross, goes back to the bosom of the Father, sprinkle his blood upon the ark of the mercy seat of God, and that blood is everlasting. It's still there. And every time God sees the blood, he knows we're atoned for. And when Jesus comes the second time, the second time Moses pulled, pulled his hand out of the bosom, he doesn't have any leprosy on him. It's because when Jesus comes the second time, he's coming without sin just like that clean skin. So I saw that hand and I thought, wow, that's, you know, that's a picture of Christ. Job 27, 11, I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. 1 Peter 5, 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Colossians 3, 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Revelation 5, 1, And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So I'm thinking, a cloud like a hand. Now, the other translations say, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say the size of a man. That would be a little cloud. How would you see that from a hilltop over the sea? So it was a cloud shaped like a hand. So I did. I thought, well, that's, that's Christ in the clouds. But then I noticed that the verse actually said that there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. So the cloud didn't come down from the heavens like a man's hand. That's Christ coming down from the heavens. That cloud came out of the sea. Who is it that comes out of the sea? Revelation 13, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. That cloud came up out of the sea. So that cloud, like a hand, I don't think it was Christ. I don't think it's a picture of Christ. I think it's a picture of Antichrist. Because we know Jesus is the hand of God. 27 bones in the human hand. 27 books in the new covenant. And they laid hands on people. You get it, right? But what about Satan's hand? Satan has a hand. And that cloud, remember that cloud turned black. Black is the color of guess who? 
okay? Dark, black, um, the lesser light that rules over the night, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And it was a storm cloud like Gog is going to be. So what I'm getting you, there's two clouds in the Bible. There is the cloud that Christ comes from coming down from heaven. But this cloud comes up out of the sea. If Christ comes out of the cloud from heaven, where's the Antichrist coming from? Different type of cloud. And he is Satan's hand. Job 1.12, the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. In verse chapter 2, verse 6, Behold, he is in thine hand. Job 6.23, Deliver me from the enemy's hand. Job 9.24, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Job 15.20, The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. Verse 25, For he stretcheth out his hand against God. Psalm 36.11, Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. Psalms 82.4, Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalm 97.10, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalm 106.10 talks about the hand of the enemy. Psalm 106.41, He gave them into the hand of the heathen. Their enemies also oppressed them, and, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Psalm 109, set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. Psalm 144, 8, whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Psalm 78, 58, for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and he delivered his strength into captivity in his glory into the enemy's hand. You get in the picture now? And with everything in the Bible, there is God and there's Satan. There is Christ, there's Antichrist. There's the, the real glory of the Lord in the cloud coming down from heaven. And the Shekinah glory, out of whom comes the other Jesus. Let me show you something Manly Hall said. Secret teachings of all ages. Artists attempting to portray divinity often showed only a hand emerging from an impenetrable cloud. The cloud signifies the unknowable divinity concealed from man by human limitation. The hand signifies the divine activity, the only part of God which is cognizable to the lower senses. And there you see illustrations, a hand coming out of a cloud. There's our tarot card, the ace of pentacles, a, cloud, a hand coming out of the cloud holding the pentagon, the pentagram. Guess who that is? That's not the hand of God. It's the hand of the devil, the hand of the wicked out of whom is coming, out of that cloud, that mist of darkness, comes the Antichrist. The storm clouds are coming, but they're a mist of darkness. They're a very dark, angry cloud. And out of that smoke comes a king Revelation 9, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And notice this, there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, Unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had have power. In verse 11, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name 
Apollyon. You see, it comes. he comes out of the smoke that rises up out of the pit, and the pit is the sea. We know the beast comes out of the pit, and he comes out of the sea, and that cloud came up out of the sea as a man's hand. All right? You get where I'm going here? The Native Americans have this ritual where they bathe themselves in smoke. It's a cleansing, a purification ritual. They have a, a sweat lodge where they build this massive fire and they get in there and they have these delusions. They have these visions. They have these hallucinations. But the idea is, is that the smoke that ascends up out of the pit, that smoke is going to cleanse them and purify them. They worship that cloud, that smoke, and they worship what comes out of that cloud. See, I have people that follow our ministry that are indigenous Americans, Native Americans, First Nations, and they've told me about the sweat lodge. They've told me about the smoke rituals. And they've come out of that. That's not their, their, they don't worship the great spirit. You see, Manly Hall talked about the unknowable God, the God that nobody can know. Well, see, that's not our God. Our God is known by his word. It's the other God that's unknowable. Now, maybe he has infected your life to some extent. Maybe you see now that you've been following the wrong religion. It's the hand in the cloud that came out of the sea. It's the hand of Satan, the hand of the wicked that you've been under. There's a remedy for that. Mark chapter 9, verse 43, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire, that never shall be quenched. I'm not saying, you know, to get rid of the Antichrist, cut your hand off. But think think about how right this, this some people say, well, it doesn't really mean that. If I had an infection in my hand, that could not be cured by antibiotics and aggressive treatment. If I'm not careful, that infection is going to move out of my hand and kill the rest of my body. And in that case, yes, surgically, it would be best if they cut off my hand, which is offending me, than to keep it and die. So yes, there's a situation and a scenario where this actually is the right thing to do. Maybe that right hand is a right hand of falsehood. You've believed the wrong doctrines. You've been reading the wrong Bible. You've been part of the wrong church for years. And it's just best to cut it off and to walk away from it than for it to continue to infect you with its Shekinah spirit. It's best to just... See, I would rather walk away from an, a church that I knew was under the hand of Satan than to be part of it and die with them or be deceived with them. Because I'm telling you, wherever that harlot spirit Shekinah is they're going to go get a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and then their right hand really will offend them but they'll enter into hell for it the cloud the Lord is coming in the cloud study the clouds in the Bible study, study God because in the future here I'm going to be teaching on that nation that Gog represents. And no, it's it's not Russia, it's not Germany, it's not the Canadians. It's a different nation. 
I'm putting together, I'm doing a lot of study, a lot of research on it right now. It's not ready yet, but it's coming. We're going to learn about that nation, find out who they are and what business they have here on this earth. All right. Maybe a lot of things will start to make sense. I hope you've enjoyed this series because I've enjoyed putting it together and it's been a lot of work and a lot of going back and correcting some things, but I think I get it now. I think I understand the difference between the cloud that Lord comes in and the other one. I hope you know the difference too. This is Pastor Mike. You're the reason why I do what I do. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.